final score. All right, back to drive to go, and then that three, as you just saw. No, and that is a huge win for the Warriors, who saw the lead get away late, but fight back to win and remain a half game ahead of the Grizzlies for the eight spot in the Western Conference standings. At 7-8, you got two chances, essentially, to win. 9-10 winner plays the loser of 7-8. Golden State's got a 78% chance to earn the 7 of the 8 and avoid that 10-9 game. Trailblazers are going to finish off the Rockets here and move within a game of the Mavericks for fifth in my book and uh, we'll we'll see what happens i think this these last few weeks have to have uh, at least vaulted him up in the uh, this the the order but we'll see if he he can climb to to first or not it'd be great to see it happen mm. and uh perk is back according to caesar sportsbook both the joker and Embiid have better odds than steph to be named this season's mvp and they're both ahead of AD as best big man, according to Max Kellerman earlier in the show. Didn't Max, say that, but nice try. Go ahead. Oh, I, thought was I just said we don't know. Oh. We don't know if oh. AD is still the best. Oh, got it. But those were the two guys you <laughs> thought that were ahead, right? That's, no, those are the two guys he has to yeah. prove it again. Yeah. doesn't mean uh, they're ahead of him. He just has to prove it. Oh, got it. I, I wasn't trying to misquote <laughs> you. We'll stay focused. Uh, Max, is Steph a top three MVP candidate? Yes, absolutely he is. He has played himself there. Now, look, a lot of this season, you know, game, early on, I was saying it's Embiid. It's Embiid. He's better than everybody. LeBron was playing real. Embiid is the MVP. He missed too many games, guys. When he missed a couple, he was four or five games behind us, six, seven games. Oh, they're still in first. He's the, if you're playing 20 games fewer than another dude or 15, 20 games, it, you, don't tell me that you're that much better that you're the MVP. So even if it's game for game, it's not Embiid. Game for game, you could argue Harden, too. The level he was playing at with the Nets. Come on, he's missed most of the season at this point, right? So we're, we really got to deal with guys who've been there. If we're talking about the regular season MVP. Jokic is the clear-cut choice. Jokic is the MVP. Not the best player game for game. He's close enough, and he hasn't missed games. Steph Curry, at this point, is probably second. Like, the boring answer is also that Giannis is doing what he always does. It was good enough to win two consecutive MVP awards. He should be in the top three. But they ain't going to give it to Giannis. It's Giannis fatigue. Even I have it, right? Steph is doing more or less what he did his MVP season when they won 73 games and he set the world on fire. He's doing that again. Other than Jokic, no one has been better and more present. If you look at this roster for the Warriors, guys, I did not think they were going to be good. I didn't think they had enough shooting. You have the greatest shooter of all time and no other shooters on the team. They're better than 500 in a very tough conference because they have a top three MVP. His name is Steph Curry. Lillard has tailed off a little bit. He's carried a big load so far. Steph is top three. Well, well Max, I respectfully disagree. And here's why. I'm not, I'm not taking anything from Steph. Steph has been must-see TV he has been on another level. But here's the problem one I have when it comes down to the MVP conversation, okay? The goalpost continues to move, all right? And, and when we talk about the MVP, we talk about where's your team right now? Like, we're, we're looking at the top-ranking teams, the, the one, the two, the three seed in each conference, the best team in the NBA, et cetera, et cetera. The Warriors are sitting at number eight. Okay, and I get it, right? They don't. Everyone in the world says, including myself, they don't. He don't have the great supporting cast, and I get that part. But they're still sitting at the eight seed, Max. They're only two games above five hundred. There's no way he could be a top three MVP candidate. I have him as a top five. I strongly believe he should be in the conversation, but he's not ahead of Jokic. He's not ahead of MB. He's not ahead of uh, Giannis, and he's not. And he's not ahead of CP3. Chris Paul, man, I'm just, like, it's it's mind-boggling to me that we just don't respect what CP3 brings to the game, okay? And we go back to when he won it, I think in 2005, year 2006, when Kobe Bryant was averaging 35 points, playing with Kwame Brown and, and, and a whole lot of others and carrying that team and had them really a little bit above. I think they might have been the eight seed at the time. It's the same scenario. 
Steve Nash won. His numbers were not better, but his impact on the team and what his team was at the time, they were one of the best team teams in the league, is why he won the MVP. Now, I will say this, Steph Curry is up there as the MDP, one of the most dominant players in the game today. Yes, he's top He's top three at that category, but I can't give him top three MVP, uh, Max, just because they're sitting at the eighth slot. Yeah, Perk, I'm with you on both points you made as far as Chris Paul not getting more conversation for MVP. And, of course, winning having to factor into the conversation when we start talking about the most valuable player award. I mean, you can talk about Steph Curry being able to be one of those guys that has a chance to lead the league in scoring, one of the oldest players to lead the league in scoring since Michael Jordan last did it. But you got to also look at what Joel Embiid is doing and what Jokic is doing. Embiid, I understand he missed the 19 games, but he's third in points per game. He's second in usage percentage, and he's top five in defensive rating. And, oh, by the way, his team is in the tops in his conference. you got to give respect to that, even if it's the Eastern Conference, yeah. which is the weaker of the two conferences. As far as Jokic goes, I mean, you're seeing what he's doing even without Jamal Murray. His team is 6-3, and three, and they're going to finish with a top-four seed in the Western Conference. He's leading them in points, rebounds, and assists. So I think you have to give respect to what both of those guys are doing. I think Steph Curry is a top-five, top-six guy in the MVP conversation. I think Lillard is in there, Giannis is in there, and Luka's in there. I, I don't know what order those guys would be in. Steph is in that mix. But I can't give Steph the nod over Joel Embiid and Jokic. I just can't. Look, look, well, Joel Embiid's just missed a bunch of games. That's the only reason I have him there. But let me just say something about this most valuable player. First of all, Perk, because they made a mistake giving Nash the MVP way back when, they should do it again? No, no, I'm sorry. They got it wrong back then. But it's okay to say they got it wrong, and we evolve. We don't have to get it wrong again. Chris Paul's having a fantastic year. If Steph was on that team, they'd be even better. I don't think Chris Paul could do with the Warriors what Steph's doing. And here's the big misconception about, well, if you're the MVP, you have to win. Yep. Most valuable and best are synonyms. I don't care what anyone says. It's just be rational about this. Most valuable, best, the guy who contributes the most to winning. Now, if your teammates aren't good enough, right, you may not win enough. That doesn't mean that you didn't contribute the most toward a win. Yeah. You just didn't get all the way there because your teammates weren't good enough. There's already a award for having the best teammates. It's calling being, you know, number one in, number one seed, yeah. number two seed, making a playoff run. That's the award. We're trying to say who's the most valuable. Yeah, but in, top in reality, it's not going to happen because of their record. LeBron James, even if he says he's in decline, even a LeBron in decline is better than everyone else. Maybe, maybe. But they're going to have to prove it in the playoffs. Harden will have to prove it in the playoffs to have me put him ahead of LeBron. Mm -hmm. Here's why I put LeBron on and not Luka, Stephen A. You said you're not going to include forwards. Luka's a forward. Because I'm taking guys who initiate the offense, who are the primary ball handlers, playmakers, and who guard the other teams, at least one player in the other team's backcourt. LeBron, I've seen shut down a prime D Rose for, as an MVP. For a player, in the player two. No, I've, for seen, a player Le two. I've seen LeBron shut down elite guards mm -hmm. in playoff games. That's not Luka. Now, Harden's not well, a great defender, ago. but he does defend guards. Every one on my list defends backcourt players routinely, initiates their offense, mm -hmm. and is the primary ball handler playmaker. I think LeBron James is not only the greatest point guard today, but in fact, he is the guy who has replaced Magic as the greatest point guard of all time. If you're making your all-time list, you put LeBron at the point. Well, listen, I, I, listen. if you're doing that, I'm not going to knock you for that. I understand it. It's just that when they were looking after they lost Ronda, they went out and they got Dennis Schroeder for a reason. You understand? Because he's he's essentially your point guard and somebody to take the pressure off LeBron when you don't want LeBron Harvard, you know, hampered with those obligations all the time. Whereas when you look at Rick Carlisle in Dallas, he said, I came to my senses when I interviewed him and asked him this question. He said, what the hell were we doing, Lucas, rookie year? What were we doing that was wrong? We didn't put the ball in his hands and let him run our team. He's our point guard, his exact words. And so when I look at it from that perspective, that's the only reason I don't have LeBron on the list. That's it. Yep. Okay. I look at James Harden. He's a scorer. Remember, Kyrie's supposed to be a point guard, but he's your off guard this year because James Harden is a point guard. So you see what I'm saying? We understand it. So, again, we know who the talent is and we know what they do. But I'm just talking about in terms of this year, what you're seeing from people who actually are listed as playing the position and running the offense both, not just running the offense, but playing the position and running the offense. You designate them as your point guard. Steph Curry is the greatest shooter God ever created. And because he's such a marksman,
combined with his extraordinary movement without the ball, combined with his ball handling skills, AI, Allen Iverson, Matt Kellerman, called me the other morning. Called me the other morning at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the morning. To What's tell, AI doing up to, to 8 in the morning? You, you'd be surprised. My brother's, doing, my, my, my brother's doing all right. But let me tell you this right now. He gets up. He said, Steph, Steph is different. He said, he said, he said, he was all stuttering. And Steph is different. He's just different, different. I mean, damn, because that's how you marvel at the greatness of this dude. That he loves. Remember, AI loves Russell Westbrook. But we're seeing something that, that this is a one. We talk about once in a generation. We have never, ever seen a Steph Curry ever. But well, guys. Ever. We, also we have never seen it. And then you got Dame, and we know what a clutch player Dame is, and James Harden, Luca, CP3 is having an MVP, top two MVP candidate caliber year. I don't agree with that. So okay. uh, I don't top know five. how you can not agree with top that. Five or top five three. Look, I'll say this. You're, you're giving Harden the short shrift here. Harden does not shoot it like Steph, as you said. No one in history ever shot it like Steph. Right. And Harden has fallen flat deep in the playoffs too often. But right up until that point, Harden has been MVP caliber every single year. And unlike Steph, he's the one dude this year. Tell me even one other player who ever lived who can run your offense like Harden, who has the court vision of Harden, the judgment of James Harden, the, the passing ability of James Harden with the ability to score from anywhere, get to the paint, free throws, three-point shot. Who tell me one other player who does every single thing on Harden level? If he had succeeded already deep in the playoffs, it would be a wrap. But as is Stephen A, I think that Steph Curry shooting mm -hmm. does not. Let James me Harden to a much me. inferior team and came that close stay to beating with me. Steph. Stay game with, seven. Stay with me because I want to be very very careful about what I'm saying here because I'm not you. I believe in James Harden. You like him. And you like what you see, but you point out what he's done in the playoffs. Right. I'm not as hard about him in the playoffs the way that you are because I've seen what he's been up against, and I didn't see him completely tank and fall apart only one year when he didn't show up in the game six against San Antonio. Having said all of that, this is what I would tell you. Max Kellerman, I watch Brooklyn. And to, and to watch the game today and what they record as an assist – I mean, I've seen them give dudes assists. I pass it to Max. Max passes it to Ma to Molly, and Molly shoots and scores, and I get the assist. Hockey.